Most hospitals are filled with patients, not in Beirut, and it's not for lack of demand. Generators have been on almost 22 or 23 hours per day. It used to be one of the busiest uh, departments in the hospital. Today, it's actually shut down, and we have, we have to shut it down two days out of five per week to try to limit the consumption of fuel. Electricity isn't the only thing in short supply. This is a cancer ward, and the drugs they need have all but disappeared from Lebanon. To say that, oh, I'm sorry you have cancer, but oh, by the way, I'm sorry that we don't have the medications that you need. That's really insane. The impacts on medical staff, undeniable. A third have fled the country in just two years. Those remaining have this message for the new government. Forget about all the divisions and all the disparities and all the conflicts that they have. We're really in a disaster mode. Uh, we're facing a huge crisis when it comes to patients. And let them just think about having one of those patients as being a family member. But this health crisis is just the tip of the iceberg for Lebanon. The economy has collapsed and three quarters of the population now lives in poverty. Even the powerful aren't immune. Power cuts at Parliament this week delaying a vote of confidence in the new government. So we asked one of its new ministers what they plan to do about the multitude of problems facing the country. I think that the most important thing that the uh, cabinet uh, will do is restore some kind of confidence uh, that is much needed, not only from the local community, but more importantly as well from the international community. But confidence is hard to come by. Just down the hall from the minister's office, people are queuing to have their vaccination papers stamped so they too can leave the country. Bye bye. The government hoping it can stop this brain drain. Irrespective of what we say at the moment, the Lebanese people will be saying the proof is in the pudding. And it is the onus is on us now to show why we are different and to put in the effort to be able to give them that the results that they deserve. This new cabinet has been pitched as a government of technocrats, experts in their fields rather than career politicians. That's true to an extent. Dr Abiad is a career surgeon and runs a hospital. The new justice minister is a judge and the economy minister an economist. But every one of them has been handpicked by the same political factions that have been ruling Lebanon for decades. Even if they might have uh, a good will in order to enact or implement certain reforms, if those reforms even go against the interest of the regime, then they will fail simply as the previous government failed. Billions in foreign aid has been promised to Lebanon. But there's a catch. Much of it can only be unlocked if the government commits to stamping out the ingrained corruption that brought the country to this point. Even if this government implements certain reforms, those reforms are most probably going to be in a way aesthetic and uh, some sort of facelifting in order to lure back international uh, assistance. But we know that they will not implement the much needed reforms that can alter the regime. And that's why few are holding their breath. They've taken away our hope. Uh, we don't even dare to hope anymore.